Hi guys, this is uh, Dr. Schultz. Um, I mean, sorry, this is Mr. Physicist. Um, and uh, I'm going to apologize right now for the quality of this video because I, uh, I had to do it through the document camera instead of like directly on the computer. So sorry about that, um, but just kind of bear with it. Uh, what I wanted to do was to kind of just debrief you on this lab that we did this week with uh, the bouncing ball. And I wanted to share with you um, the way that I did the lab so that you could kind of see this and, and use this maybe as an, an, as an exemplar. That is something that like has got everything going on uh, that, that's good. Um, you guys all had a lot of good things going on in your own labs, and I know we talked a lot about those in class. But I just wanted to kind of give you an example of like pulling a lot of things together into one lab to, uh, you know, so that you can see it all in one place. So, um, one of the one of the things about a lab, or about any type of um, investigation that you design, is that you have to start with a good question. And in this particular activity with the ball, the question I think we could all agree on is how is the bounce height related to the drop height? That's really the question that uh, you were trying to answer through the different measurements that you made. And you were trying to make a prediction about how high to lift the ball before you'd let it go. So I'm just going to read off on the side here. Um, I set out to discover a relationship between the bounce height and the drop height. Okay, so I'm just going to state that. Um, I also talked about a couple things here about the idea of an independent variable and a dependent variable. Okay, so first of all, I decided that I can easily change my drop height. So I made this my independent variable. The independent variable, guys, is the thing in the experiment that you change on purpose. So for all of us in this lab, the independent variable was basically how high you started when you let go of the ball, all right? Because you could control that. So that's really important. That's your independent variable. Um, then the dependent variable would be the bounce height. So the dependent variable is usually the thing that you measure, meaning you're measuring it to figure out what happens to it, okay? So you would, you would kind of, you know, try to measure and see, well, how high does the ball really go? And so this would be the dependent variable. So I'm going to tell you, these two terms are super important, independent variable and dependent variable. And pretty much any investigation you're going to do is going to, um, at some level, uh, you're going to need to have those two things going on in the investigation. Okay, now let me share with you, um, first of all, a funny picture. <laughs> and, uh, and I just want to say that here, um, I thought about this lab a little bit before I did it, and I felt that it was pretty important to identify things that could cause my results to not be quite so good. In other words, I tried to identify sources of error. So let me share with you a couple things. Um, first of all, I knew that I was going to have to take me as many measurements um, as accurately as possible. Okay, so I wanted accuracy. And so what I thought of was perhaps the idea of using like um, a slow motion video. Um, I know I had at least one group do this in one of the classes. Um, but that way, if I use the video, I can actually really carefully measure the heights. And I'll show you how I did that in just a second. Um, I also know that the way the ball bounces can affect its path. So I tried to come up with a way to drop it the same each time, right? So where my hand was and how I was holding my hand, I tried to keep that the same each time when I dropped it so I could be consistent. And then I had to pick a measuring device and I used a meter stick and this was the best tool that I had. And with the meter stick, as, as you all know, you can measure um, to the nearest tenth of a centimeter. So um, that's what I did. And I'll show you some of my data in just a second. But I was able to, um, to measure to the nearest tenth of a centimeter, which is the best a meter stick can do. OK. So let me describe a little bit about the procedure that I used. Um, in my procedure, what I did is um, I taped 
a two meter stick to the wall. And the reason I taped it was because that way the meter stick wouldn't move right when I'm doing the measurements. So that's a good thing. Um, secondly is I took a, another stick and I put that one horizontally at specific heights. And you can kind of see it there. And that second meter stick, this one right here, helped me to know exactly where to release the ball from so that I would be consistent. So being consistent is super important and having this extra meter stick here actually helped me to do that. Okay, uh, next I had to um, first of all figure out how high the ball would, would, would bounce kind of generally. So I had to drop the ball once to kind of gauge how high it would bounce and then I kind of knew where to focus my attention. Point four, I then recorded the bounce from up close in order to make sure that I could see the ruler as accurately as possible. And then I took a screenshot of the video and I drew a line horizontally to make a measurement on the ruler. So here you can see that my method allows me to make estimates up to the tenth place. And um, hopefully you can see that in, the, in the, uh, the image here, that with the video I could really, really get pretty close and I could get pretty exact in my measurement of where the ball was. Um, I also tried to be really consistent and I tried to always use the bottom of the ball. That makes sense because the bottom of the ball has a clearly defined edge, so it's easy for, for me to measure that. If you use the middle of the ball, it's a lot harder to make that, that high precision um, estimate, right? So using an edge of the ball is probably the best thing to do. Okay, and then just a couple more things about the procedure. Um, I repeated this process, so I had three trials for four different heights. And I recorded the data in a table, which I would analyze later. So I'm going to zoom in on the data here. And I, I really want to stress um, to everybody that it's really important, if you can take more than one measurement, you should. So you can tell from my table that I did, um, I actually did three trials. So my first height was at 120 centimeters but then I measured the bounce height three different times. And as you can see, the bounce height like, isn't always the same. It goes from 94.8 to 95.7 to 93.1. And that's because there are still some variations, right? Maybe I'm not hitting the exact same place on the floor. Uh, maybe the ball is hitting on a different side. It's a little bit different there. So it's always good to take multiple measurements. If you can do five measurements, do five. If you can do 10, do 10. The more the better, your results will be better overall. So in my data table, this is what I got. This really only took me about five minutes to get all that data, so it didn't take all that long. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of wrap up this first part of the video here. Uh, I went through the procedure with everybody, and I just wanna stress some of the things that I did were to be consistent, um, to do multiple trials, uh, to you know, use my, my available tools to the highest precision possible. You know, a, a ruler with a slow motion camera was, was really good. And when I'm communicating that procedure in these different steps, I'm being very specific about the things that I'm doing. And I'm telling you exactly how I did them. So somebody else could actually read these steps and hopefully repeat the experiment um, for themselves, which is kind of the point of the peanut butter and jelly video too. Okay, so I'm going to stop this video. There's going to be one more after this, and I'll just tell you how I analyze the data. Okay, so I'll see you in a bit.